is chapter 1.2, classifying and storing data. Once you collect your data, the next step is to analyze your data. Data analysis involves creating summaries of data and explaining what these summaries tell us about the real world. So data can take forms other than numbers and categories, such as photos from your last vacation. We will spend the majority of our time focusing on data that consists of characteristics of people or things. These characteristics are called variables because they have variability. The values of the variable can be different from person to person or from object to object. Note, even though it is possible that every person that you collect data from has identical characteristics, i.e. the data has no variability, we still refer to these characteristics as variables because they have the potential to vary. So for example, the variable of interest in number four from the previous page, if we go back to that question, we were asking students how many text messages they had sent today, which means our variable is that same question. How many text messages did you send? You can also just say it's the number of text messages sent. Okay. Number three, the object of interest or the who or what that we are studying and that we collect data from is referred to as a unit of observation or an observational unit. The observational units in number four from our previous page were the students in our class. They were the people that we were asking the question. Okay, number four. Data sets are a collection of data. A sample is a subset of a population. A population includes every person or object of interest. One of the goals of statistics is to learn something about a population based on what we observe in our sample. This is referred to as statistical inference. For instance, we could consider the students in our class to be a sample or subset of the population of students at GCC. So in our picture, we have the population being this large circle that includes every student, and our sample is the smaller subset or smaller set of people. So if we had the students in our class be our sample, and we ask them, what's your age? And we calculate the average age. One of the questions we're going to be interested in is whether or not that gives us a good indication of the average age of all the students at GCC or all the students in our population. There are two types of variables that we're going to be working with this semester. First one is numerical variables. They're also referred to as quantitative variables. And these measure numerical characteristic of the object of interest. The data you collect for these variables will be numbers. Categorical variables, also referred to as qualitative variables, record a group designation or specific quality of the object of interest. The data you collect for these variables will be categories. If a categorical variable only has two categories, then it is referred to as a binary categorical variable or just binary variable. Okay, the distinction between these types of variables is important as it will determine which statistical tools you can use to analyze a given set of data. This so next question asks you to identify the different types of variables. So you may want to press pause and try these out first. Um, I'm going to go through the question right now. So number six says classify each of the following variables as numerical, categorical, and if the variables categorical indicate whether it is also binary. The objects of interest for this problem are the students in our class. All right, so the question, how many text messages have you sent today, is numerical. So you're going to be collecting numbers for that. Part B, at what time did you send your first text message today? That's also considered numerical. For instance, someone might say 7 a.m., somebody else might say 8. You can get a series of numbers. If you're thinking that you're collecting it as morning, noon, or morning, afternoon, and evening, then you may consider this variable as categorical. Somebody else may consider it binary if they're thinking that it's before 12 o'clock is one choice, and after 12 o'clock is your other choice, or 12 o'clock or after. And in those cases, if you're not sure which it is, you may want to make a note of why you think it's 
categorical versus binary versus numerical. See how many credits you're taking this semester, that's numerical. And we could rephrase it as well and make it categorical or binary if we change it. Change the wording to, are you taking more than six credits this semester? But the way it's written as is, we're going to leave it as numerical. D, whether or not you're taking more than 12 credits this semester is now binary, because we're giving you two choices, two categories that you can fit into. The number of Harry Potter books that you have read is numerical. Your handedness, which hand you write with, typically, typically is considered binary if you're limiting yourself to left versus right. Somebody else may consider it categorical if you include ambidextrous as one of your choices. Average study time per week is numerical. How many states you have visited is also numerical. Gender is considered categorical. Typically, there's more than two choices for that. But I'm going to note that most of the studies that are out there that we will be looking at and the data that we will be using still treats gender as a binary variable. Uh, zip code. Those are numbers, but they actually represent the town that you're from or indicate the area that you're from. So that's considered a categorical variable. And whether or not you smoke is binary. Variable is often phrased as a question. How many text messages have you sent today, for example? These questions are directed towards the observational units. Research questions are directed at the data set and are what a, a study is designed to answer. They are used to summarize the data set. So a research question typically looks for, and there's three examples here. Uh, one, it might look for a pattern in a variable. Did a majority of the class send a text message today? So if we went back and counted, we'd want to see if more than half the class sent text messages today. Uh, part B, the second option, it could compare a variable across different groups. So for example, do smokers tend to send more text messages than non-smokers? And the third one here, it looks for a relationship between variables. Is there an association between the number of Harry Potter books a student has read and the number of credits they are taking this semester? And keep in mind with these research questions, you need access to the entire data set and be able to answer these questions. Okay, so moving on to number eight. So suppose that the 15 community colleges in Massachusetts are our are, are observational units. Identify which of the following are legitimate variables, in other words, questions that can be answered by each observational unit, and which are research questions, questions that can only be answered by summarizing the data set first. If it is a variable, classify the variable as numerical, categorical, or binary and you can write an R and that indicate a research question. All right, so first one, age of the college's current president. You can imagine each community college coming forward and providing that information. So that is a variable, and it's numerical in nature. In other words, numerical, we can take all those ages, we can sum them up, and we can calculate an average and give the average age of the presidents of the community colleges in Massachusetts. Gender of the college's current president is categorical. The number of colleges with a female president is not a variable. In this case, each individual college cannot answer that. Okay. That's a research question instead. So we'll put an R here. It's a research question because it's going to summarize the 15 community colleges. Mm -hmm. D, number of full-time students currently enrolled at the college this semester. That varies from college to college. That's numerical. It has the potential to vary. E, the percentage of the current students of the college that are on the dean's list is also numerical. F, whether or not the college was founded before 1970. That's binary. You've got two choices. It's either was or it wasn't. And then the last one down here, part G, the percentage of colleges founded before 1970. That's not a variable either. And this one is another example of a research question. It's a research question, again, because what we would need to do is collect all the information from Part F and use that to answer Part G. It would summarize all 15 community colleges at once. Okay, number nine, we're going to look at how you store your data. Data are often stored in a spreadsheet-like format in which each row represents an observational unit and each column represents a variable. I'm going to use the table below to help us organize the information from number eight. Using a consistent format will help us recognize the various features of our data sets. All right, so what we're going to do is take our observational units 
and they're going to give us our row headings. So GCC is one of our community colleges in Massachusetts. HCC is another. We've got Berkshire Community College. And we've got a bunch of others, but we'll just stick with three names for now. Our variables go across the top. So we've got the age of the president as one of our variables. We've got the gender of the president. We've got number of full-time students. And we've got the percentage of students on the dean's list. I'm just going to shorten that to percentage of students. And we also had whether or not the college was founded before 1970. And if you take a closer look at these and think about the ones we said were research questions from up above, this column right here, we would need all of those answers in order to get the answer for part C. And a research question tries to summarize the data from all of the observational units. Same thing for this very last column here. We would need to collect all of that information, all of that data, in order to be able to answer part G. Number 10. This is the next page. In the above table, each row represents a Massachusetts community college, and each column heading represents a single variable. This format is referred to as the stacked data format. Some technologies, such as the TI graphing calculators and Stack Crunch, which we'll be using this semester, accommodate unstacked data. In this format, each column represents a variable from a different group. The groups are determined by a categorical variable. Tables of data, stacked data on the left and unstacked data on the right, are below. So as an example, and stacked data is right here. And if we look, there's an observational unit in each row. So each row, again, represents one observational unit. Or one object of interest. This data was then converted to the table on the right, the unstacked data. And what we've done is we've taken these two people who said that they smoked and we have put them into their own column. And then we've taken the three that do not smoke or answered no to the smoking question and moved them over to a separate column. So again, unstacked data in this format. Each column represents a variable from a different group. So we've got the smoking group and we've got the non-smoking group. And the ages are displayed below. Okay. Number 12, sometimes categorical variables can be disguised as numerical. For instance, the smoke variable given above and shown in the following table can be given numbers, such as 0 or 1 for its categories, even though the variable asks whether or not the observational unit smoked. A yes response was coded with a 1, and a no response was coded as a 0. This variable is still categorical, so in fact it's binary, as these numbers represent categories. Using these numbers allows us to add the responses together to find the total number of smokers, and even to find the proportion of smokers in the data set. Okay, so if we take a closer look at this table of data, you can see we've got our five observational units, one per row. In this case, we have five students. They answer the question whether or not you smoke. And then the no's were converted to zeros or coded as zeros. You can see those three no's each have zero in the third column. And the yeses were coded as ones. Okay, so if we look at the questions below, we can now answer that. How many smokers were in this data set? We can find there were two. We're just adding up the numbers in this column. It's no different than going into the middle column and counting the number of yeses. And then the proportion of the data set that smoked, there were two out of five, or 40% of this group were smokers. Typically, when a categorical variable is coded with a zero or one, the variable is renamed with one of its category names. A 1 then means that the object of interest belongs to that category, and a 0 indicates that the object of interest belongs to the other category. So notice that the 1s indicate a yes for smoking. And they give us, again, the name of that heading. Okay, moving on, we've got one more on this. Next page, number 13. Context is key. The context is the most important aspect of the data. 
To understand a data set, there are several questions we need to ask and to try to answer. The first one is who or what was observed? What is the observational unit? So I'm going to go through an example. Let's say that the students in our class are our observational units. They're the who or the what that we're studying. We can go in one day and say, okay, we want everybody's height. Then height is going to be our variable that we measure. Third question, how are the variables measured? Maybe something that's self-reported, maybe by memory, or maybe we use tape measures. The units of measurement would be something like inches, possibly meters, possibly feet and inches. Let's just stick with inches for now for our example. Who collected the data? It's probably going to be your instructor. When we collect data or we ask you for data, we're the ones doing the collecting. Uh, how the data was collected or how did they collect the data? We might enter the data into, at, enter the data into stat, stat crunch. So students, we'll say, or the instructor. And StatCrunch is the statistical software that we will be using this semester. Where were the data collected? It's probably in class. If we're going to collect data from you, we'll probably do that when we meet as a class. And H, why were the data collected? Well, it's going to give us data to work with. And the last one, when were the data collected? Well, it might be the day that we first meet. So maybe it's a Monday in June or Monday in September, whenever our semester starts. Last note down there is that many of these questions can be answered for a data set by the information provided by the researcher. Other times you may not have access to these answers. If you collect the data yourself, then you should record this extra information.